and my special guest today is joined. I'm joined by Dylan Burston. Uh, Dylan, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, mate. I'm really good. I'm hyped to have you on the show. Uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. No, mate, it's, it's my honour, honestly. Um, so, in our podcast, we sort of talk back, we go backwards a little bit from where we are today. Um, we walk right, take you right back to when you started in the game uh, and before. So, you were born. Let's start there. <laughs> where do we go from here? When I was born. Yeah, um, well, yeah, before... Um, I got into boxing. Um, I used to get uh, believed a lot, and I had a um, uh, like a sort of like a speech um, impediment when I was like born. So like I would like stutter quite a lot. Um, I wouldn't be able to get my words out. I would just get frustrated, and that's what caused me to get bullied um, when I was like um, quite early on. And then yeah, my granddad got me into the boxing gym because um, he did it. And then, yeah, um, I was about six years old, I think, five or six. Just really just to keep fit, uh, lose weight and just try and, you know, find something to do. Um, And then, yeah, from the second I walked into the gym um, and had my first spa, yeah, I loved it. And, yeah, I couldn't get enough of it ever since. Good stuff. So how old were you? Six when you started out? Yeah. When so, what your first bout was? What until you? Because I know you can't start. On my first bout, I was just ten. Yeah. Yeah, I just turned ten. Then I was yeah, I had the skills with a kid that was a year older than me. So yeah. And from that, hook straight into it into the program. Friday nights, wherever you were, wherever the gym was taking. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was just a, it was just a feeling of I suppose going into the um like the unknown, do you know what I mean? Mm. I was just you know um digging deep, um you know meeting new people, you know going against your biggest fears, it's just everything, and then coming out of your skills or fights, um just that feeling you get of like success and ah. Uh, the, the feeling you just can't you just can't explain it I've got, to say, I've got to say I like as much as I possibly can to get to the amateur shows on a weekend uh, I like to ring announce for those guys free of charge because I don't charge them for that um, because you guys work so hard gyms have it so hard to make money to make sure they've got your lights on even um, so yeah so I, I try and give as much as I can back but yeah the amateur scene what was it like, your amateur scene? Because everyone's slightly different, although similar in some respects. Well, what my amateur thing was like. What was your, what was your amateur scene like? Was there you know, prospects? Was there people that you knew going through? You said you met new people uh, in, that, in that thing. So who were you meeting? What was the sort of calibre of people you were meeting? Were you champions or... Uh, um, or... Yeah, well, well, when I first started off, um, you know, fighting... Um, you know, when when you're old enough, I was just you know you just box against like beginners and like just like kids that are coming into it. And then when I got what 13, 14, I started boxing against uh, champions. And it wasn't until I moved gyms until you I started getting to like a high level and um, like being surrounded um, by like high level uh, lads. Um, from the gym I'm at now, we we got um we had a pro called Tommy Langford who won a British title, and just having his face everywhere of what you can achieve from a small town, um yeah inspired the like inspired the likes of myself and a couple other lads from the gym that was in the same boat of just trying to compete at a high level, and then yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Yes. Did he ever come into the gym? Was he? You know, did he put in? He yeah, he came into the gym a couple of times. Um, when I when I first joined, um, we did. He came and did like um, we did a thing for charity. I think it was like a hundred round, uh, spa, and it was just it was just seeing like a British champion down, uh, in your gym, to you know sparring and actually being in a ring with him as well. Yeah, it was um, sort of like an eye opener. Yeah. 
and the pro game is is different. Obviously, you probably saw that firsthand when you if you sparred with him as well. How it's different from the amateurs. Is there? Can you sort of give any insight for uh, for listeners about that sort of? Yeah, sparring sparring pros and sparring amateurs. Um, yeah, I I like sparring pros. Um, I just think it suits my styles more. It's a bit more slowed down. Um, you think about your shots a bit more because obviously you got longer rounds to do it. Where in amateurs, it's just three three rounds, three minutes. It's just so quick. You ain't got time to think. Where pros is six, ten rounds. You know, four, six, ten rounds, and it's just. Uh, you get to think about what you're doing a bit more, um, you know, how to land the shot, um, you know, setting it up. It's just, you know, it's a lot better where in the amateurs, oh, you just can't think. You just got to get in there and just do. And it's just, it's like, it's really rough. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not, you get a lot of boxes, but it's like a, it's, it's more like a fight in there. You know, not much skill, just a high pace, just work, 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 work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I see that in the amateurs, but obviously that then obviously has led to other things for you. You've gone obviously on to, uh, well, talk about the well, I'll let you talk about these the, the nationals, um, championships that you you entered into and how that worked out for you. Well, how the championships? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I've entered. Um, well, I've done three four nationals and i've got to i won it last year i won the nationals last year um the na gbc's i think it's called and um yeah and i've got to the finals the same year as well in the england boxing um and yeah the you know going from a club club bouts to national boxing on live stream boxing against the best lads in the country you do, you know, you do realise um, the high level, you know, straight away. I mean, a lot of, you know, you do feel a bit of pressure in there. Um, but, you know, it's end of the day, it is exciting as well. Um, but, yeah, w- w- when you're in those high level matches against, you know, like number one for Midlands or London, yeah, it's, um, it, bring, it can either bring the best out of yourself or, you know, it doesn't. And how, how do you prepare for for the championships? Is there a, is there a different routine that you do as opposed to the club shows? Talk talk us through that. How do you prepare? Um, so you know, I I like to try and get as many club bouts in as possible because end of the day, there's no better uh, preparation than fights. I know everyone, I know like outsiders think sparring and fighting is the, like the same, but it's not. Um, so yeah, like I like to bring in high level, you know, sparring partners, try and get as many club bouts as I can before, you know, wherever. Um but because of my weight, uh everyone in the country is um, you know, they you know, I'm very limited to what I've got around me, do you know what I mean? Um so yeah, so I, I tend to normally spar with um another pro in the gym called Billy Stanbury. We, you know, we have done countless rounds together and he gets me in really good um, shape for the national fit, strong. And, um, yeah, but ideally I like to get, you know, as many club bouts in as possible. Uh, on, a, on a championship, on a championship, sometimes, uh, I mean, you can have several fights on one day and then another fight, a couple of fights on the next day. Is that, how, how how do you prepare for that mentally as well? I mean, is that is that the case with the championships as well? I'm not sure. I suppose. Yeah, you do. You have so because um, I was a youth lad, well, and this year and last year, um, you have um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And to be honest, um, you, the only preparation you can is just to get stuck right in. Um, you know, it's always a lot tougher than what you think. Because after the first fight, your body's knackered. Just do, you know, you don't really feel it on the day, but when the next morning you wake up and you got to get ready for a weigh-in and that, you feel your body's really sore. Um, but no, the best thing to prepare, be, to prepare yourself is just do countless rounds of sparring. You know, try and do six, break, then six again, and just, you know, um, just keep doing that, really. But, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, you, you got to put your body through some limits to, you know, box at a high level for three days straight, especially against the best lads as well. I don't think I don't think some fans understand that with the championships and having that on you, two three days worth of, of fights, um, you know, and it's not it's it's what two two fights on one day and then the, the final or some I, I do they they all different don't they? Some yeah, yeah, they're all different as different. in the ages, yeah. But I don't think fans really understand how much you know in the amateurs that you're actually being put through, and you say maintaining your weight through that. I mean, when a pro does it, he weighs in. He can go off and have a Nando's, or she can go off and have a Nando's. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, come back a couple, you know, come back, put the weight back on. How does that? How does that affect you, physically and mentally? Yeah, I, I say it affects you. Um, depends how well you, depends how well you've handled your weight. Um, I say leading up to the uh, the fight, really. Um, like I said, some lads struggle at the weight, some lads don't. Um, Normally, the ones that are coming up will probably find it easier than the ones that have to cut. Um, but no, I mean, you know, the only really suggestion is to after a fight, don't go and st- stuff your face with a Burger King or a Mackey's. I mean, you still try and eat well. Um, and, you know, like maintain the weight, you're going to put a lot on. But they normally give you a bit of a weight allowance as well. I think it's 0.5. Um, each time I think depending on the ages I think yeah. it's not a lot but I mean anything anything you would take do you know what I mean yeah it's a little help to to help you know that at least a little bit you know yeah yeah I get it yeah um, I get it yeah um, obviously that's where you're you're kind of out at the moment you're still doing some box cups now and some championship stuff now is that right yes correct yes so what's what have we got coming? What have we got sort of in the in the pipeline at the moment that you I have to do? Um, a Riviera box cup next weekend. Um, that's quite um a high level you know tournament. You get lads up and down the country. Um, I think this year we got some. Um, I think we got Irish clubs and a couple of French clubs. I think coming over, um, which should be good. I don't really know who I've got yet until I get there and weigh in. Um. You know, but you know, as as long as I fight, you know, um, that's all I'm, you know, looking forward to. And then the nationals, um, my nationals won't be until I think it's March, because then I turn senior in January. Um, so yeah, my next nationals is in March, and then I'll hopefully try and win those seniors, um, the nationals, and then, um, you know, do a couple more fights and hopefully turn over pro next summer, maybe a bit after, just depending on how we're doing the seniors. So the, so the game plan is ultimately pros. Yes. Uh, turning professional. Um, but, okay, so, yeah, so how you how would you see that? Yeah, I think you just sort of elaborated in, in that respect. So you want to do this yes, your seniors, and then see where you are and see if, you, if you're happy with where you are in your performance, then you look to go... Uh, Pro, is that does is that sort of the game plan, or is it sort of well? Let's just see. Let's go. Like maybe another year in the in yeah. Amateurs. Yeah. So the game plan is um, the end goal is to turn pro, obviously. Um, but the, pro, the you know the professional game is a lot different than the amateurs, and especially being a young lad like myself, um, you know you got to adapt because obviously I'm still you know growing and building to my body. And then I'll be, and then when you put, go pro, you fight, you know, men with smaller gloves. Um, you know, they're, it's normally a bit more rougher and more grittier. Um, and, you know, sometimes the best amateurs don't make the best pros because they can't, you know, adjust or, you know, they're sort of not ready and come into it a bit too quick. But, um, no, but, you know, I would like to have as many fights as I can as a senior, hopefully every two, three weeks. Um, yeah, just get used to fighting men without the headgear coming off as well. That's quite a big thing. Um, that takes a little bit of time to get used to as well, having the headgear off, because obviously you have it on for so many years and it comes off and getting punched in the head with it with 12 ounce gloves on. It's, it's a big difference. It's, um, yeah, it's all different. I mean, it's more, you know, you're more sensitive, you know, you get. 
more prone to cuts with the head and things. And yeah, it just takes time getting used to. But um, yeah, I'd like to do the seniors, see how well I do in the seniors. Um, hopefully, if I win that, um, I'll do a couple more fights after that. And then if my coach thinks I'm ready, because entirely is up to him, um, you know, when I go pro. And have you got? Have you had people interested in in management or you know people coming forward to you saying, "Give me much thought." Or, or, I don't want to say anything out of place, but you know, in case someone's no. got a deal or you know, confidentiality with NDAs. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not too sure. To be fair, um, I know we. My coach, he's a, a manager, um, and the other pro professional boxer in the gym. He's with Steve Goodwin. Um, who, you know, is a very good, um, you know, manager, promoter. Um, he's, you know, got a lot of um, fighters under his uh, belt with, you know, that have, have won titles. Um, I'm not sure, to be to be honest, but um, ideally I'd like to get, you know, a TV deal. Makes, you know, things a lot easier. Because um, obviously, as you know, professionals, they rely on ticket sales. And if you haven't got a big, you know, following... Um, you know, it's very hard to, you know, make profit and, um, yeah, very hard to make profit and make a living out of it. That's why, I'd, you know, when you win the seniors, you, um, you know, you, you get more interest in you. So, um, no, I mean, I would just, I just like to take it as it comes. And then, you know, when we sit down and, you know, think about it, I'm sure, I'm sure he's got, you know, I'm sure he knows, what he's doing with me and who's been looking at me and whatever. But, I, yeah, I mean, I did. I like to have a TV deal. Yeah, I, I, th- I think, again, fans may not realise how much ticket sales is important to uh, professional boxers as they turn pro, how much that actually helps them to then be in the gym because the profits then go back into training, into, into your gym fees, into uh, your nutrition, into your food, and how it means that you don't have to, you can sort of, put work if you like on the back burner for a little while whilst you focus on and it means that you can have better camps because you're not having to go to work every day I, I guess you work at the moment or, or I, I don't know How, where, where are you doing no I do um, I do full time boxing at the minute okay. just just to focus on you know um, yeah. the professionals and things yeah and I bet that's, that's tough for making sure that everything is balanced and making sure the books are covered and the, the, the right way well. yeah yeah well like well that's why professional fighters rely uh heavily on sponsors um you know if they don't have a tv deal you know having you know good sponsors that is you know it's crucial to you it's like it's crucial um but yeah you know people don't realize how hard um you know the professionals are when you're in a small town selling tickets and things um also you know I always find it hard as well, um, the travelling and going to the shows. Like, if you go to, to your call in London, from where I'm from, um, you know, you've got to pay for travel to get there, to stay, because right in the middle of London, looking at, you know, a good couple hundred quid, do you know what I mean? And if you do that every, you know, eight to ten weeks, people, you know, don't have the the fundings for it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll totally and utterly back you on that one. Uh, when I do shows in the York Hall, it's always like when you've got you Les now as uh, as well. You've got if you take the car in, so you've got to pay for that. Yep, yeah, obviously if you're staying over, then that's two nights. Yeah, uh, yeah. The costs just keep topping up, and you kind of don't realise how much they go up. By you don't realise the until after. No, you're finding out then you're a couple hundred quid down the thing. It, it, was it worth you doing the show because you only go you know yeah it, it's all balance it's it's about the balance I suppose of it all but. Yeah, and, and you're right, fans unfortunately don't have as much money as previously and ticket prices aren't as cheap as people think they are now. I think an average ticket is about £50. Pounds. Yeah. Uh, and again, if you're going out, as you say, every other every other month every other month or so, uh, three months quarterly, it's still a lot of money for a lot of people to put out and yeah, understandably, that, that's fine. Um Great, I I glad to see that you want you've got a direction and you know exactly where you're going with it all because it's it sounds like you've got some ideas of plans of what you want to achieve in boxing. Um, yeah. Do you want to share any other 
goals that you want to set yourself in boxing? I mean, I, pro obviously is the next step, but beyond the pro we're in the game, is there a belt that you like to get hold of? Is there a belt that you'd like to sort of focus on getting to or a level in that respect? Um, I believe in myself that I can definitely win a British title in the professionals. And then, you know, I would like to, I, you know, I believe in my talent and I believe in, you know, the hard work I put in. Um, I believe I can go, you know, amongst the best in the world, to be honest. I sparred, I went to Las Vegas um, last summer. I sparred the number one ranked in the world um, out there. And, um, yeah, he was like, oh, he was unbelievable. And we did, you know, compare rounds. It wasn't just, you know, a one-sided thing. It was compare rounds. And he's turned over pro, and they believe in him uh, massively um, and believe he'll win a world title. So, I, you know, if I've been in the ring with somebody like that and did compare rounds with them, you know, I 100% believe I can, you know, be in amongst the best in the world. And the, the experience of being in a, being abroad as well. What, how was that for you? What was that like? Um, being abroad, it was um, yeah, it's it's different. Um, especially being out in Vegas. You know what I mean, a lot of people treat you like um a punch punch bag. Um, they'll try and just you know chew you up and spit you out. Um, but we trained in the in the mayor the mayor of a gym, and um. Yeah, they, they saw that I wasn't no uh, pushover. And then they invited us uh, to top rank um, a couple of days after for sparring and things. And it was like, thing is, end of the day, when you get an offer like that, you have to make the most out of it. Because um, it's not every day, you know, you walk into a top rank gym surrounded by, you know, the Vargas brothers and the dad and um, you had Charles Martin in, in there. You had, you know, some big names. And um, yeah, you just got to take it with both hands. And that was in the Mayweather gym in Las Vegas, was that right? Uh, that was I. I did training. I did training in in the Mayweather gym, and then I sparred in the top rank gym, and did a couple hours of training in there as well. Good. It was was Floyd around? Did you did he put his head in and watch? That? Floyd so... Floyd Senior and Jeff was in there. I did a couple okay. rounds with uh, Jeff and uh, Floyd Senior. Yeah, it just. You know, doing pads with, you know, people that have, especially those who that have seen it all, you know, they've seen many fighters, you know, it was just a very surreal moment. Yeah, the, the experience level then, you're, you're learning and you're gaining from their, as you say, their experience of being with you in the, in the ring there and uh, going through the works and going through the motions with you. That's yes. Fantastic. Is there, is there anyone that you look up to in the sport and think, I'd like to achieve that sort of level or that sort of level of success or has there been someone whose style perhaps you, you've looked at and think actually I can emulate or do that uh, with that sort of style make it my own I know you said you know you, you, you said you know, about the, being in the gym and you, you're going through the amateurs at the moment but is there someone you thought of, well, actually yeah that's that sort of level of success is where I'd like to get to and that's the sort of person I'd yeah I'm always to. I'm always inspired by um, you know uh, fighters that have had um, a rough and tough uh, background, um, you know, and haven't had many opportunities. Like uh, Brad Pools, you know, he won a British title uh, a couple of weekends ago, you know, and, you know, he, he knows how hard it is being on a small, small rules. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I look up to, you know, fighters like that. Uh, Tyler Denny, he's been on small, small rules shows as well. You know, he's had it, he, he's had to do it the tough way and build himself up. And now, and, you know, now look, you know, to get an opportunity to take it with both hands. Um, but style-wise, um, to be honest, I think, um, I, I just think, you know, I haven't seen a lot of people who style out of mind. I mean, I can switch. Um, you know, there's a lot of switches, but I'm just trying to be, the, you know, the next, or I'm, I'm trying to be Dylan, you know what I mean? The first Dylan Burston. And I want yeah. uh, people to look up to me in a, in a couple of years' time and want to be like me. So that's, yeah, that's you know, what my dreams are like. Yeah, mate, I respect that totally and I know that people are, you know, people say, say, oh, he's the next, uh, you know, he's the next Anthony Joshua or the next, uh, yeah. you know, Dillian White or the next 
heavyweight champion or whatever. You know, what, all these names. There's lots of people coming through at the moment. You listen. You, you know, we just had uh, you know, uh, Joyce and um, Chisora. Uh, you know, and, and we're saying about Joyce being the next prospect, the next thing, and then we have a setback. So yeah it's, but they're saying that he's the next you know he's the next tyson he's the next uh bruno or whatever it is and that, that and that does detract i think sometimes because he is joyce he, and he, you know, he, he is on his own merits his own great boxing you the same you'll be the only one dylan that we we, we know and associate so yeah i respect that but thank you cool yeah cool um so yeah so british championship Maybe a world, maybe an intercontinental, maybe a European. Who knows? Yeah, sky's the limit. As long as, as long as you work hard, yeah. You know, there's um, you know, there, there's so many titles you can win out there. But I would love to um, I, I love to get my hands on a world title. If I get a world title, when I get a world title, that would be you know the, the ultimate dream. I like when you you corrected yourself there. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, correct. <laughs> it's, it's when John. It's not no not when. It's, it's when I like it. Um, beyond boxing, I know you probably haven't thought this one through, and this is a, probably a little curveball for you. But what would you like to do beyond boxing? Once the career has been done and the belts are in the shelves, is there something that you'd like to accomplish in in life? Outside yes, when I when I've um, finished my boxing career, um, I like to open up a gym in my uh, local um, town. And, um, you know, just, um, you know, give young lads that was me um, the chance to, you know, have a dream and make that dream happen. And, you know, just just give something back to the community. That's great. That's great. And obviously you want to find people like yourselves that have been through the, the issues that you went through. We explained the beginning of the podcast, uh, you know, with the... With just been bullying and other things like that in the school you know that's very great that's good that you want to do something like that as well and that, that will, i look forward to seeing that hopefully but i hopefully see that after the world championship uh, has been put on the wall as well so yeah definitely yeah hopefully too good man good man well Dylan, I, just to wrap it up then we'll just sort of come in there because i think again i thank you so much for coming on the podcast it's been really a pleasure having you on and finding out more about you uh, and I hope that the fans are listening really appreciate it and for start to follow you on social and all those other things as well. So what what are you on social are you at the moment? Your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? Instagram, Facebook, you know, the whole lot. And that's at Dylan underscore Barston one. That's the one, yes. Yeah, Barston one. Fantastic. So people can go and look you up and follow you as well and get behind you. Yeah, thank you. Supporting you as well. And now that's this is the point of this podcast as well. Just expose you you to the your boxing audience as well so that they can learn more about you and and get behind your story and find out why you want to do these things and why you want to do it and respect you for that for coming on as well yeah thank you just very quickly then just some wrap-up questions just sort of quick fire sort of things um so you said you switch a little bit so southpaw or orthodox orthodox yeah um nando's or kfc Nando's, hundred percent. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Okay. <laughs> Dark Coke. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Coke Zero, though, as well. That one. Coke Zero as well. Other brands available as well. Um, Mayweather or Packy, Pac-Man. Got me Mayweather. Great yeah. all time. And. Last one, least, Joshua or Fury? Joshua. You haven't got to explain it. We'll just leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the podcast today, The Big Hype. Thank you, Dylan, so much. Thank you very much. Take care, all right? Thank you.